Hello! Today we are going to be jumping inside this box and making something with the contents. So I'm going to open it up and uh, see what we're working with. Ooh, I'm feeling the cool tones. Let's see, we have a candy. It's a Ludi Memphis. I'm actually quite inspired by like the creamy white color with the turquoise and the blue. I think that's really quite pretty and it'd be fun to draw something along those lines. Let's see what colors are in here. There's one busting out. We have the Derwent Graffitant watercolor pencil in the color Midnight Black. Maybe we'll be adding water. Judging by this, I think yes, we're going to be using a lot of water. <laughs> So let's see what the supplies are. Oh, it's actually watercolors. Hmm. For some reason that was not on my radar. <laughs> okay, so we have the scrawler box sticker. Very pretty. I like the kind of, I think those are called gem tones, but they're like very pastel. So I guess they're just pastels. But I like the texture. Whatever. And then we have the menu listing all of the art supplies in the box. And then here's the call for why the box ripped. It seems to be too big for the box. The Derwent Graffitant Paint Pan Set. There are 12 colors and and it's a travel size. Got ya. So here we have the pan. We have a little color key with the 12 colors listed on it. There's a palette for mixing colors. And inside here we have the colors. And it also comes with a travel brush that you can put water inside of. And a little sponge. Colors seem so weird. Don't they look kind of like grayed out to you? Unique blend of graphite pen. Oh, they're actually graphite. That is what it looks like. It looks like the inside of a pencil. To be honest, even just looking at the example illustration, it kind of looks like when you try to mix colors and they end up being really muddy and you're like, ooh, I don't know how to use watercolor, but this is like the way they come. Maybe I will be proved wrong. I'll try to keep my excitement contained. All right, here we have the zine for November. 2020 does not need to come back, but here we are. So we have a sticker, the candy. There's supposed to be some paper in here. Here we have the print from the featured artist. It has like an abstract vibe, but you can also see like mountains and a bush and trees in the reflection and like a lake and snow. Oh wait, was I looking at it upside down? <laughs> All right, the artist though is Claudia Drexage, an artist living in North Germany. And there is their social links. I really like the graininess. Like it adds to the nature vibe of this painting. And I don't do like nature paintings. And usually that graininess is really, really annoying when you do like cartoony art like I do. So maybe we should try to do something a little different. We will see. And the paper. <laughs> this is the Langton Mold Made watercolor paper. It appears to be cold pressed. 8.3 inches by 5.9 inches. I guess it was probably made to specifically fit in this box. <laughs> How many sheets was it? It does not say. Maybe they just forgot. There's six though, if you're wondering. <laughs> Ooh, there's more on the artists. Ooh, and more of their art. I like that color. Even though it's very muted, which I usually try to avoid. All right, while the camera's off, I got some water. I also grabbed some of my own paintbrushes. Like, I even grabbed this thing to fill it, but I don't usually really like using those. So, since I'm not out and about and have to, I thought, why do, hmm? I feel like what we probably should do if I want to be smart is swatch it out. Also, it kind of just sounds like fun. Maybe just go for it. See what happens to get used to the colors that way. I'm going to use these little guys as my guide. So we have autumn brown, russet, meadow, green gray, slate green, ocean blue, steel blue, dark indigo, aubergine, juniper, port and graphite gray. And I assume they correlate like this. Now I think the first step I maybe would be to work on the background because the background is blue to orange and then in the reflection it goes orange to blue. Let's just experiment. We have six sheets of paper. Really want to just throw this paintbrush onto the paper. I think I'm ready. Okay, we're going to start with maybe this steel blue color and we'll go around the edges. Okay, that just looks like gray. But I'm just uh, filling it in, kind of following 
the pattern of my reference and just blocking in the shapes and it should get a little bluer as it gets that way so I'll move over to this color see if I can get kind of a gradient maybe if I just put in my mindset that I'm just swatching just a really big swatch we need this color a little bit of purple along the edge they all just look like black I need something like more vibrant for the yellow, you know? I also probably should have ripped this out and taped it down because that's what you do with watercolors, but don't tell me what to do. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to myself. So like that goes right here. I think it's like thin here. Just gonna add in some texture here of clouds. I'll blend that out. I wanna repeat this on the bottom as our reflection. Steel blue. Whoa, it's darker now. Sometimes you wanna like spray those so that they can get more pigmented. And this seems to be the case with these ones. So I'll switch to this port color, I guess, right along the edge. Maybe a little aubergine. I don't remember what I used before, even though it was like five seconds ago. <laughs> so I like the deeper colors down here. So I'm gonna try and replicate that. I'm definitely gonna need to tape this down. Hmm. Ah, this is a big disaster. Okay, no casualties yet. I've already painted to the edge, so we're not gonna have a cool clean white border or anything. You know what? We're just swatching. We're just swatching. Just swatching. Now it won't buckle and then the paint won't like pour into little divots. That's what drives me nuts. Just continue swatching like nobody's watching. I might just bring up this a little higher. And then move back into that aubergine. And then I wanted to kind of copy the same thing on the top. Deepen up the darker areas. Whoa, that's the same color, guys. Blend those together while they're still wet. Might use a dry brush and try to blend those together. Looks like a storm cloud. Kind of just be creative with it. Now these are supposed to be reflections of each other, so I should try to kind of give a small hint that they're the same thing. Connect to those little blobs. So now that needs to fade into the purple and then that goes into like an orangey yellow, which is like the sunset. Make sure I clean my brush. I want it to be yellow here and then almost white here. So maybe I'll leave this white. I assume meadow will just have to do. It looks a little bit green. Oh, that's just green. We don't have a yellow. You know what we could do? We'll just leave it white for now and use this green for the hills back here. Draw in some little mountains. Kind of give it some organic shape. I'm gonna grab that darker green. Reflection. Almost like I just need a lighter version. What if I grab this color for the reflections? It's like a bluer version. Even though it doesn't really look like what I'm aiming for right now. It kind of looks cool. It's got a little edginess to it. Draw like little trees. Could do the same thing on the other side maybe. This is using the slate green color. I gotta say they look nothing like the little printouts. Just kind of doing tree shapes. I want to connect these two lines here. I also need to build up the color there once that dries. I'm gonna add a little more water to the brush. Kind of draw this reflection in, just so it's like a little bit lighter. Okay, just let this dry a second. I guess in relationship to like that green, it does look a little bit yellow. I wonder if I could layer just a little bit. Just kind of added it in for, I don't know, a hue shift or something. It didn't work as the yellow I wanted, but can't always get what you want. I don't want to work on the cloud down here a little more. Now that I'm not going to have the yellow color, I feel like I need to make that look a lot more like it does on the top. Can I do more swirlies? Because I like that texture up there. Grab that dry brush and kind of swirl it in. It would be cool if I could like wet the brush and see if I can blend these out. Because then I can get it like to be fainter. Switch to the dry brush maybe now. Blend it out even further. When I like take a step back, it honestly doesn't look that bad. I quite like it. A texture with the paper towel. I want to kind of bring this more towards that, so I need the darker color. I'm thinking while this is wet, might not be a bad time to try. Because then it's going to kind of bleed outwards, see? Oh, maybe that's when I use the other guy to kind of blend. 
Now this bottom one ended up darker. Maybe it'll dry a little lighter. Blend out the edges. Just, just give it a little, just give it a little, little something. Still, I gotta admit, my uh, first impressions of like the colors and the graphite tint or whatever. I still think they look freakishly muddy. Even when I don't mix a color, like not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. Even though they're kind of muddy and gross, I am digging the vibe the muted tones are giving. It's very eerie and spooky. I think I will leave that as is. I don't think there's anything I really want to do to it besides adding in the foreground. But I do have to wait for it to dry. Is there something I can do while I'm waiting? I'm gonna get used to the pencil since this is a swatch, right? Since this area is a little wet, it's blending into the colors and looking a little less black and more just like a darker version of whatever I'm drawing on. It kind of just looks like I'm drawing with graphite. It's called Midnight Black. This should be darker. Hmm. I don't think it's gonna work the way I'm hoping though. It does not have the deepness that I think I'm gonna need, but I can probably trace out where I want that rock to be. Like this, and it kind of goes this way. Kind of like points towards that vanishing point. I think that's what it's called. You know what would make this darker? Is if I get it wet. I'm gonna dip it in the water. This is not going on the way I wanted it to. Dang it. Anyway, we got a tree trunk right here. Kind of like swirls this way and that way. Breaks off into two points. And that's kind of where the leaves start. Let's try graphite gray over top of this. Really try to saturate the brush so it's kind of dark. This is kind of more what I was looking for. And then we also need a bunch of like little rocks. Now, since this is very abstract kind of vibe on a landscape, you don't need to actually straight out draw in something. You just need to give the illusion of something. I'm gonna darken up these tree branches. Darken up some of these trees. I think I just need a little more contrast from like that back hill thing. I'm actually using the same steel blue color. I'm blending it out with my finger to kind of give the reflection more fading outness. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of this on these rocks. So now we need to draw in the leaves. I want it to be very dark since the background is sort of a mid-tone. Start just painting in some leaves. I'll worry about connecting them to something maybe later. Kind of just trying to fill the area right. Find organic shapes. Kind of switch the angles of the leaves. The largest cluster would probably be here. It doesn't stand out as much as I thought it would. It's also a little high. Maybe if I bring the leaves down a little. That might just have to be it. I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe because this trunk looks like it's the background. That kind of helped. All right, so there's my first thing. I do want to try another one. And this time I'm going to actually tape it down before I even start. <laughs> Add like reflections or ripples in the water. I might jump in handy. So I can draw like water ripples. I'd say that's it for this one. Okay, I want to talk about what I like about this. I like how the reflection of the trees is a little bit lighter than the trees. And even though this is technically white, it looks like it has color to it because of what's around it. I also really like the way this cloud turned out up here. I also like how it's like dark on the edges and gets lighter towards the center. Yeah, I'm gonna remove this tape though since I'm not that concerned about it drying perfectly. See how you get a nice edge when you put it down before you paint? Boom, baby. I do like the spooky nature, but it would be nice to have a less spooky color so that I could have done like the sunset, you know? So let's move this off to the slide and try one more thing. What I should try is to use the colors to draw something I would normally draw and see what happens there. So I might go to portrait. I also might want to use a color ace pencil. So this is a rose colored one. And I'm thinking if I add this behind it, it's going to add a sense of vibrancy. So I'm going to just draw a classic little human being, maybe a portrait with ears into my brows, some shoulders. I probably should keep in mind the spooky tones. Oh, that's the first time I've erased all day. Felt good. Maybe a little face. This ear's a little out there. I mean, I draw out their ears, but even I have a limit. <laughs> There's a lot of space up here. We could do like a ball cap. Might take up a little space. 
Eh, eh. With some curly hair. Fill up the space here. I'm kind of just enjoying myself here after slightly torturing myself with the landscape. <laughs> These colors are so... I don't know if it's obvious, but they are not up my alley. So we'll see when I throw dreary colors onto this character what happens. Throw in some bangs here. To kind of hide that awkward space that was right here. There's some freckles. I'm kind of happy with the shapes and curls of the hair. I like that it's like on a longer on top and shorter in the middle. It kind of has that like tomboy vibe. Do like a turtleneck. Maybe just something simple like that. What about one of those like turtlenecks that's actually a tank top? This is a little summery for what the weather is outside. I suppose we could make it more of a sweater. Maybe give it some sleeves. Maybe add a little rib to the bottom of it. I'm gonna add a copy of like that shape over here. Okay, I kind of like the drawing. Now let's ruin it with these colors. Psst. Don't turtlenecks have like a rolled over piece? Now I think I'm ready to add color. Wow, that came so much more natural than this. Let's tape it down. Try to get it as straight as possible. There we go. Kind of thinking about adding another piece right here and then we can just trim it to size. That way I can add a background if I want and then still have room to cut it. All right, what colors do we want to do? They're like all cool versions. We could do a gradient of like blue to green. Let's try and start light though and then maybe we can build up for textures because I think that's what the difference is between the bottom and the top. Here I was like building up colors so you can kind of see the texture there. Whereas here I kept like throwing the color on while it was still wet. I don't like that quite as much. We're gonna use slate green and then we'll just work from there. <laughs> Gonna follow the lines. Maybe we'll use something lighter for those top pieces. We're just swatching. Oh wait, we're not anymore. Um, we're just swatching. <laughs> this is actually really good practice for me for using a brush. Cause I tend to have a hard time controlling them. Having a line there that I have to like try and trace is probably a very good exercise for me. I layer it back here where it needs to be even darker. Okay, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. I do want to like gradient it into another color, but I already finished that side. So it might be too late, but maybe there'd be more light hitting this area. So why don't I try switching into this green blue? Doesn't really look that different. I might use this as like an opportunity to do like a two-tone hair. We have not used the autumn brown for anything. We might be able to use that for like blush. Never actually used this color yet. So maybe I'll swatch it. Trace these eyes while I'm here. So that's weird because that's warm and then that's cool. Might have to go over that with something. We'll see. Blend this out a bit. Warm this area up. Add a little blush. A little shadow under this chin. And inside the ear. A little more shadow underneath the hair. I do you want to try the port color? Maybe lips. Yeah, that's something I think I'm gonna have to keep building up as it dries, so we'll just leave the face like that for now. We could try the light green for the front hair, and if I don't like that, I'll go over it with the same green as the back hair. So the color I'm using is called Meadow. Hoping it's enough contrast. And here over here. That looks kind of cool. Not super contrasty, but she gives off such like sea vibes. I might grab this color and do one of these stripes. And then I think I want this green color for her pants since it's kind of very far away and we won't have to worry about them competing with one another. But I think it will also ground the drawing because it'll be the two dark areas. I could probably also use this for one of these stripes. Add in like some texture. See if that still shows up when it dries. I guess what's left is the aubergine color. Maybe if I do it in a very pastel way, maybe use the big brush. Maybe if I lay out some water first, and then grab more water, and then the aubergine. Kind of just put it down and see where it goes. Very light. It kind of looks just black. I don't know if that's just the nature of these watercolors because they're graphite. Throw it up here on the hat too. Need a little darker on that sleeve. Maybe this sleeve too. A little shadow. A little shadow under this hat. Blend it out. 
I would like to see if I can use this to draw in these eyelashes. Deepen the colors. Okay, kind of like that. I like the brown eyes. You know what? Is this watercolor erasable? Because it's graphite? Oh, <gasps> it is. Why was that not the first thing I thought of when it said they were made of graphite? That must be what makes these watercolors unique, is the fact that you can erase them, though. I'm kind of still bewildered by that. <laughs> That's not like a normal thing. You can't normally erase watercolor, right? <laughs> I think the face turned out really nice. I'd like to raise the nose up a little, is that possible? Be careful with that pencil, because it does bleed out really well when you get it wet. Finish outlining all this. That little texture to the pants. Okay, now that I've added the lines, I don't mind the white kind of color for the shirt and everything. I need a little shadow here. I honestly want more of this green color. Add like a design on the hat. A nice circle. Add like a gradient. Do that kind of same thing I did with the sweater. So I'll take this, throw in a bunch of water, then grab that green color, dab it in. Try to blend it out to kind of nothingness. It looks like swamp water. <laughs> Can't say it really added anything to the illustration. It does make the white stand out a little bit more, I think. A little makeup around the eyes. Lips. Shadow turned out really nice. So basically what happened was I put down the colors, then I went over with the midnight black pencil, then I went over it with water, and now it's a lot smoother. I kind of just want to add a little doodle to the background. Let me just grab straight meadow. Just gonna add a little bazoop. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Maybe a little swamp glitters. Okay, I kind of like it better. I like it with a little something. Just a little uh, whatever I wanted to do. Wait for that to dry and then we'll peel the tape off. Why don't we compare it to our first attempt with these colors? I kind of like this better now. How does it look this way? It's like a spaceship. You know what I should try? Adding in little highlights to like this rock. We can try the white gel pen. Draw in the texture of the rock. Ooh, what about that like little candy cane? This makes a fine point, eh? It's kind of hard to control <laughs> the candy cane. You can stay the way you are. Feels like it's dry. I might leave this so I can remember where to cut it. Take these off. Ooh, oh, I didn't get quite a clean edge there. Can't win them all. How about this edge? Let's see. <sighs> clean. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Cut about that far into it. So we'll hopefully get that same clean line here too. Oh, there is a bit of a line there. That worked perfectly. Sign it, I guess. Kind of cleaning up some edges. Doing a little final touches. I kind of like it. Like green isn't a color I usually reach for and this palette is like majority green. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And then this too. I like this. I feel like it looks like a tree on a rock. <clears throat> Going off into a one point perspective with like some of that Bob Ross hills in the background. <laughs> oh, can I use a white gel pen? Will it draw on this? Nope, nope, nope. That pencil is a watercolor pencil, so when it feels the moisture, it starts blending instead of just drawing straight over. I'll try and do a dabby. Hey, the dabs worked. Now she's got some highlights in her eyes. That's it for me. I want to thank Scrawlerbox for sending this my way. It was a lot of fun. Definitely not something I would have reached for, but it definitely was fun to try and work on that landscape. And then doing something a little bit more my speed. If you're interested in checking out more about Scrawlbox, I will have a link in the description as always. And again, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. It really means a lot to me. And I hope you uh, all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!